All right, we're going to take another look at the Lime SDR Mini. I said uh, take a look at using it remotely a couple different ways. I've shown LMS TCP in the past, which is like RTL TCP, uh, but this time we're going to use it on a Raspberry Pi that has the Lime SDR Mini and Dragon OS Pi 64 on it. We're going to use that and we're going to uh, connect to it locally with SDR++. Uh, we're going to also take a look at the network sync feature in uh, SDR++. We're going to add a network sync and then we're going to transmit um, a PogSag with uh, a GR mix a lot and then we'll receive that and decode it with SDR++ via the remote Lime SDR. So a lot of moving pieces here. We're also going to take a look at how to update SDR++ with Dragon OS. Super simple. Here uh, I got the page pulled up. Uh, copy the um, clone, the repository uh, to do that, which I think I've already done. We'll do git clone. Copy and paste that. Uh, in my case I have already done that. We'll go in, change into the SDR++ directory. And you can use uh, a couple different ways of passing the uh, additional options through as you build SDR++. Um, what I did just for this video is uh, we'll make directory build, which I've already done. And normally you would change into the build directory and you'd run CMake uh, with you know options that you would pass through. But just to make it simple, here we'll take a look at editing the cmake lists.txt directly just because just so you can see what's all in uh, dragon os here and you'll see the options that you could normally pass through uh, in my case uh, i've turned the uh, the following on lib air spy lib blade rf because that's already included in dragon os the lib uh, line suite uh, i've changed it from off to on uh, lib sdr play from off to on Really, uh, it's about all you have to change. We'll just stick with RT Audio. So as long as you make it look like this, uh, you're fine because everything's uh, already in place on Dragon OS for this to work with. You'd make a build directory. You'd run CMake, which I've already done. You'd run uh, Make with however many uh, cores you have. Uh, I've already done that just to kind of speed this video up. And then uh, what you could do if you were uh, worried about maybe something not overwriting what's already there, you can use sudo remove uh, slib sdr plus plus plugins. So you could remove everything that's in here with the uh, little star there, little asterisk. That'll remove all those files. And then you could run a sudo make install and uh, sudo ld config probably not needed in this case um, but you'll see all everything is back now you're up to date with the latest sdr plus plus which in this case uh, because these are pretty much in sync here the release and the latest uh, commit you're probably going to be at 1.0.3 and you can do the same on both uh, dragon os uh, focal and for the Pi procedure is pretty much the same as long as you've installed the SDR play API then everything will be fine so we have the latest SDR plus plus you can start it from the command line or you can look under uh, the ham section of Dragon OS focal and you'll find it there so now we're up and running here with SDR plus uh, plus let's see take a look at uh, so I, I mentioned GR mix a lot you can see what it does here that's already installed in uh, Dragon OS focal and we're going to use some of the um, examples there to uh, generate a message here and let's see I'll open up a couple other windows here let's see actually we'll close this one shift just so you can see what I've put in there ok 
Okay, we're going to set that to the background here. We'll go ahead and we'll start SDR++ back up. So if we switch over to the Raspberry Pi, which is what you're looking at here, we can see I've got a Lime SDR Mini plugged in. You also want to take a look if you do a dash probe driver equals Lime SDR you'll see what antenna types are available under the RX section of what it spits out which right here antenna you can see the different types so for some reason or another the LMS TCP you can see the options looks very similar to RTL TCP uh, we at least need to pass an antenna option because the default antenna that it chooses is not correct so we should be okay with auto and everything else can stay as is because right now SDR++ kind of overwrites uh, the bandwidth and stuff so we're kind of limited to what um, SDR++ allows right now unless you were to go in and hard code some things so right now this is the line SDR being shared with a yet another uh, ability to share the line SDR LMS underscore TCP on the Pi now if we come back over to SDR++ we go down to RTL TCP and we click connect after we change to the IP address of the Raspberry Pi in this case 1.49 or 0 0.149 we can come over we can see we're connected we just need to raise the gain, turn the volume down, and so just like you'd expect, you can control the Lime SDR Mini uh, from SDR++. So now we're taking advantage of the uh, Lime SDR. We could, uh, you got to be careful because and turn the volume down because you can tune outside of the capabilities of the Lime SDR right now with SDR++ so don't really go uh, below 30 ish megahertz and don't go above 3 something gigahertz uh, otherwise you'll crash the uh, server so you can see here we can go up to around 3 gigahertz or so whatever the top limit is um, but Oop, I probably just crashed it. So let's see, so let's see, we'll come back over and you can see what happens when you kind of go outside the range, so be careful with that. We'll come back. Okay, we're connected. Now it's gonna get a little complicated here. What we're gonna do is We'll open up another terminal and we'll go to the user source GR Mixalot examples directory. And in there, there is an example for the HackRF. That's another thing I should point out. You need uh, the 2021 or higher uh, firmware for the HackRF to work with DragonOS because that's what I have the lib HackRF at. Um, okay, so anyways, GNU Radio Companion. Looks like we'll go HackRF. We're gonna get a flow graph here. So there's gonna be a lot going on here. We're gonna get a flow graph like this that is set up for the HackRF. The device arguments are already correct. The only thing we need to do is open the parameter. I'll change it to a string and then this is what's going to be transmitted. We'll look and see we're looking at 158.7 megahertz so let's go 1 158.7 7 megahertz. Let's do a quick test here. We'll save this to the desktop. Okay, we can see it's transmitting with the HackRF on 158.7. So now what we need to do is we'll come down here, look at the module manager, click the drop down. We're going to add a network sync 
and we'll call it pub say add that come up to radio switch that to network and leave everything default here localhost 7355 we'll click start come over here we see we've got our command here set up that's going to run on localhost you got socks all this is already included in dragon os to include multimon ng and we'll set it up accordingly hit enter Okay, I forgot we need one last dash there, I believe. So that uh, gets PogSag up and running. All right, so how best can we see all this here? So I'll move this down a little bit so we can kind of see. Uh, let's see. We want to see SDR++. Got this. All right. So we can see we've got our network sync. We've got this set up locally, listening on the local host. We're using GNU Radio to simulate this, and then we've got our SDR plus plus set up. And we have our Lime SDR Mini uh, remotely receiving this. So uh, just picture kind of the Lime SDR out there receiving this for real and then us doing everything locally here. So let's give this a shot. We'll play this here and then we should be seeing it decoded over here. And there we go. So we transmit it with HackRF received uh, remotely with the Lime SDR and then with the GNU radio and then decoded this with Multimon NG and we used SDR++ as the front end to receive it and send over the uh, audio over the uh, network sync. Alright, so that's kind of an all-in-one thing there, taking a look at some advanced features of SDR++, how to update it, how to use GNU radio with the HackRF and how to use Multimon NG and uh, so there, figured that would be, uh, tie that all together nicely. All right, thank you.